Random House Audio presents this excerpt from Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, recorded from the show floor at New York Comic Con. For more information about Random House Audiobooks, visit www.randomhouseaudio.com. A sudden silence hit the earth. If anything, it was worse than the noise. For a while, nothing happened. The great ships hung motionless in the sky over every nation on Earth. Motionless, they hung, huge, heavy, steady in the sky, a blasphemy against nature. Many people went straight into shock as their minds tried to encompass what they were looking at. The ships hung in the sky in much the same way that bricks don't. And still, nothing happened. Then there was a slight whisper, a sudden spacious whisper of open, ambient sound, Every hi-fi set in the world, every radio, every television, every cassette recorder, every woofer, every tweeter, every mid-range driver in the world quietly turned itself on. Every tin can, every dustpin, every window, every car, every wine grass, every sheet of rusty metal became activated as an acoustically perfect sounding board. Before the Earth passed away, it was going to be treated to the very ultimate in sound reproduction, the greatest public address system ever built. But there was no concert, no music, no fanfare, just a simple message. People of the Earth, your attention please, a voice said, and it was wonderful. Wonderful, perfect quadraphonic sound with distortion levels so low as to make a brave man weep. This is prosthetic Vogon Zeltz, the Galactic Hyperspace Planning Council, the voice continued. As you will no doubt be aware, the plans for development of the outlying regions of the galaxy require the building of a hyperspatial express route through your star system, and regrettably, your planet is one of those scheduled for demolition. The process will take slightly less than two of your Earth minutes. Thank you. The PA died down, died away. Uncomprehending terror settled on the watching people of Earth. The terror moved slowly through the gathered crowds as if they were iron filings on a sheet of board and a magnet was moving beneath them. Panic sprouted again, desperate fleeing panic, but there was nowhere to flee to. Observing this, the Vogons turned on their PA again. It said, There is no point in acting all surprised about it. All the planning charts and demolition orders have been on display in your local planning department in Alpha Centauri for 50 of your Earth years, so you've had plenty of time to lodge any formal complaint, and it's far too late to start making a fuss about it now. The PA fell silent again, and its echo drifted across the land. The huge ships turned slowly in the sky with easy power. On the underside of each, a hatchway opened, an empty black square. By this time, someone somewhere must have manned a radio transmitter, located a wavelength and broadcast the message back to the Vogon ships to plead on behalf of the planet. Nobody ever heard what they said. They only heard the reply. The PA slammed back into life again. The voice was annoyed. It said, What do you mean you've never been to Alpha Centauri? For heaven's sake, mankind, it's only four light years away, you know. I'm sorry, but if you can't be bothered to take an interest in local affairs, that's your own lookout. Energize the demolition beams. Light poured out of the hatchways. I don't know, said the voice in the PA. Apathetic bloody planet. I've no sympathy at all. It cut off. There was a terrible, ghastly silence. There was a terrible, ghastly noise. There was a terrible, ghastly silence. The Vogon constructively coasted away into the inky starry void.